Hello everybody, this is Dr. Alejandro here, hanging out in my lab. I'm starting up a new little mini-series uh, that was suggested to me to do, where I'm going to be going over a little bit about some minor mods in the game, and ways to show you guys how to make some things. How to spice up your, your gameplay, change things around a little bit, so you can add some things into the game, and just make your 7 days experience a little bit more personal. A lot of people have seen on my stream, my Resident Evil themed world. That's uh, kind of the picture you're seeing up on the screen right now. This world actually was pretty simple with the mods to actually make. What I'm going to actually be showcasing for you guys today is how we go about changing the number of spawns in the world. So this world has a very high increased number of zombie spawns everywhere. And because of that... There's constant fights happening. So I want to showcase how to do that so you guys can then go through and tweak your game a little bit and do a little bit of that yourself. Maybe not as high as I throw it up, but you'll be able to put things to whatever level you kind of want to play around with. Let's go ahead and invisible this. So here is the overall 7 Days to Die folder for Steam. An important note is in order to actually implement mods into this game, you do need to have this mods folder. This mods folder is pretty important. This is where you actually put things in. So for my Resident Evil world, I have my overall mod folder with the XML files to kind of give the information. And inside I have the two actual mod files that are going into this world. So there's only two different things I'm editing to make the world play out the way that I want it to. Uh, we also have in here a blank mod folder, which just has a blank XML. I'll show you guys that a little later. You'll be able to make use of that to kind of play around with things yourself. All the data for the game that we actually use is inside of the data folder and config. And all these XML files here control almost everything that's going on in the world. So we're going to be playing around with a couple of them and over time, showcasing a few different things you can do to change the game around for yourself. What we're going to be playing around with today is spawning. And I already have these XML files opened up. You'll want a program like Notepad++ in order to do this stuff. Uh, it's one of the best ways to actually run through it all. So here is the actual spawning XML file for the base vanilla game. I know my webcam will cover some things, but it's not too bad. Uh, I'll be able to move things around a little bit so you guys will be able to see what's going on on the screen. Now, there's a lot of information in here that covers all different types of spawns. We're not worried about most of that. For today, we're just going to focus on this one starting area. So here are different spawn rates for the different biomes in the base game. Your pine forest, the burnt forest, the desert, the wasteland, and the snow biome. So things are currently set to their default values. So we can see how much, how many zombies are kind of getting spawned based on a multiplier amount. So when we look over to what I'm changing, I'm actually editing these numbers in a separate file that's overriding this when the game starts up. So I showcase to you guys, we have this mod, fo mod folder here, Resident Evil, uh, and we have their spawning XML. Now, this is what we're actually really taking advantage of. So that file is over here. So in the blank XML, it just has config and end config. Everything that's going to happen is inside of there. Now, I do this in a couple steps. The first is, well, one, uh, I'm removing the actual piece of information from the base XML file. So this remove XPath. An XPath is basically a pointer back to the base game's information. So we're looking at the spawning and the biome named Pine Forest, which is here. And I'm basically saying, I'm looking at this, let's just delete that. And I do that for all five of the different base biomes. Now there's a few different things you can do with these XPaths. Remove is one. Append is kind of the, one of the biggest ones we make use of. Appending something is... We're taking what we're actually here inside this append and end append. And it's basically throwing it at the bottom of this XML file. 
You can also do some other things like setting specific uh, XPath parameters. We'll cover some of those in a later video. Uh, right now, I really just want to show people a little bit about changing spawn rates. So, for this world that I have, I actually am going through and saying zombies all. So, this is during the daytime. Uh, we're going to multiply that up. So, I'm going with 20 instead of 1. At nighttime, we're dropping it down to only 10. Uh, the nighttime zombies are a lot rougher, and we don't really want to caught out at night anyway. So I dropped that down a little bit for this world. But overall here, so we removed all the old uh, values, and now we're adding in new ones with this append into the spawning file. So to do this, the easiest way was really to come over here, copy and paste all of this, copy this, and paste it right into this file here, and then just change the numbers to what you want it to be. So if you want something that is more zombies around, a little bit harder. You can buff that number up, four or five. All of the overhaul mods as well make use of these similar procedures. Like the Darkness Falls. Uh, so this is actually a Darkness Falls uh, spawning file. So you can see that in different wastelands they have different numbers. So in the Pine Forest biome, they have a max count of four. They have a different respawn delay. Uh, so Kane actually went through and modified a lot more values, changed some more things around. But in general, it's following a similar procedure. So by copying all this in here, you can change these values up. So if you want your vanilla game to be closer to maybe Darkness Falls, you can set it to like 4 or 5, and you'll have a lot more zombies running around the world. And you'll have a little more fights, and it'll be a little more intense that way. Or if you're running one of those mods and you want slightly less zombies or more zombies than the mods given, you can even go into the mods XML files and edit these values. So with this, again, these are meant to be just really short videos showcasing little things to you guys. So today is really just introducing you guys to the concept of these numbers. And you can change the uh, number of animals, wild game, and zombies. And each biome has slightly different values and different enemy groups. What I'll end up showing you guys in the next video is what we can do to the enemy group. So say you want to change things around. You have this normal suite of zombies you see during the day and you want to add things to it or change around the zombies that are involved in it. We're going to do that in the next video and showcase that. It's going to be a little bit of a moving process. Well, we'll go through different pieces so that you will be able to change things around yourself. This uh, blank mod I'll be putting up in the description below so that people can grab that and put information that they want. You can also copy paste that if you want to have multiple XML files in your mod. Overall, it's pretty, really simple to do all of this. So it's not that hard to approach. Doing really advanced things takes time. You do have to learn a few things, but there are some super simple things you can do to really just change up your game. Uh, if you guys enjoy this, consider giving a like on this video, consider subscribing, and I will be putting out more of these. And the goal is to just keep moving along and keep showing you guys more little things in each one. I don't want any video to go too long, so we're just doing simple things for each one. I'm going to build on it over time in a little series. So thank you guys. Uh, this is Dr. Alejandro, signing out.